Hey, what is happening? Welcome to the TNA Wrestling Bomb for Glory 2012 review. The show opened up with an exhibition title match. We got Rob Van Dam versus Sima Ion, who was the exhibition champion during that time. We saw Sima Ion doing some sort of suicide dive on RBD. Then later on, we saw RBD doing some sort of catapult into some sort of... Uh, kick then after that obviously he set up Sima Ayan and he went for the kill with the five star frog splash and that was it winner and new X Division champion Rob Van Dam not necessarily a bad match but not very memorable especially when you compare to the other openings that Bound for Glory has had over the years but this was not a good, bad match, but it was neither good. It doesn't have that much repair value. But you, if you're watching this show all the way through, this type of match won't bother you and you should not skip it. Next we got, for the X Division title, we got Magnus versus the Samoan Submission Machine. Samoa Joe, the television champion during that time. We saw Magnus hitting the Michinoku driver on Samoa Joe. Then his world famous elbow drop, but only for a two. Then they got they got into a little bit of a chain wrestling. And obviously Samoa Joe did have the advantage of that. He was able to put the coquina clutch on Magnus and that was it. Winner and still television champion, Samoa Joe. Good match. These two have a lot of chemistry together. But the only problem is that I wish this match was at least 5 to 10 minutes longer. Maybe 2 minutes longer and it would have, you know, go to the next level. But obviously it did have that type of atmosphere and that type of of base in order for you to build a better match next we got the best match of the night with Kim Mo being the enforcer we got the eighth factor of professional wrestling Bobby Roode versus the cowboy James Storm holy cow they have a big stare down at the early stages, then we saw James Storm teasing the eye of the storm in some sort of table that had like a crystal <laughs> or something like that. I was like, yo, don't do that. You're going to, you know, cripple this guy. Then you see, you saw James Storm wearing the full plum crimson mask. Then after that, obviously, he hit a, uh, Bobby Roode with a candlestick, a couple of of times then he did an assisted DDT obviously being assisted by the ropes into that ramp face first when Bobby Roode and then a little bit later on it was when it started to pour in the blood in the face of the cowboy James Storm then he went for the second one Said, yo, the first one I was not able to power bomb this guy, but I'm gonna try it for the second time. So he went in to do a power bomb, but Bobby Roode you know, took a little bit of advantage and he was able to hit a spear on James Storm on the table. Then he went for the three count, but it was only at two, and he started, you know, arguing with the referee. And even if you're noticing this picture right here, you see the blood <laughs> even on the camera over there. Holy cow. Then Kimmo, you know, went in and he defended Jane, uh, Eric Hermann, saying, hey, yo, Bobby Root, knock it off. I'm going to knock you out if you start messing with my man Earl. <laughs> so James Storm went ahead and took advantage of that with a little super kick but only for a two count and then after that obviously they set up the tom tax <laughs> bobby Roode ended up landing on that and james Storm went in for a elbow drop but only for a two then after that james uh bobby Roode went in for the 
humiliation. He went ahead and took the beer and he wanted to break that beer on the head of the cowboy James Storm. But James Storm obviously went ahead and hit a low blow on Bobby Roode. Then he went and hit Bobby Roode with the beer bottle. Then he super kicked him into the Tom Tax. That was when you know Bobby Roode was out of the match. And James Storm pinned him for the three count. Winner, James Storm. Excellent, excellent stuff. The mess, best match of the night. This is a classic. If you have been seeing this match, after you finish this review, <laughs> go ahead and watch it. And you will agree with me. This match was very, very intense. A lot of blood and enough of fun. And obviously, you got the special enforcer being King Mo. But obviously, he was in no way, shape, or form a distraction. So, that was a plus. Next, we got Joey Ryan versus Al Snow. If Joey Ryan win, he will get a contract with TNA Impact Wrestling. At the very, very early stages, we saw Al Snow hitting the snow plow on Joey Ryan, but only for a two. Then after that, Al Snow went in for his, to use his old friend head, but it was not successful. They did a little bit of a referee bump over there. Then Joey Ryan he went ahead and he kissed <laughs> the head. Then they did the old school thing with the banner over there. Then after that, Al Snow went ahead and looked for the head. And none other than the blueprint. Matt Morgan showed up and he was, you know, making sure to that his man won. Therefore, he went and did the carbon footprint on Al Snow. Then after that, Joey Ryan won. And it was revealed that Joey Ryan and Matt Morgan were working together all along since they had a common enemy and the, that enemy being the TNA management. This was a short, short match, nothing out of the extraordinary or anything like that, but it was passable. I always saw a lot of potential in that tag team of Matt Morgan and Joey Ryan, but the cooler head at the G TNA headquarters didn't see much of it after they obviously <laughs> book that angle. Nothing actually big came out of this. Next we got the Frank Kazarian and Daniels cutting a promo backstage for the next match of the evening for the TNA tag team belts. We got a Mexican American, Chavo Guerrero Jr., Hernandez versus Kurt Angle, and the Phenomenal One, AJ Styles versus Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian. But influence or the affliction, whatever name you like the most. At the very early stages, we saw one of those, you know, bad landings when <laughs> Kazarian tried to do a Ura Karana on the apron into Hernandez, but they didn't like that good, but obviously nobody was hurt. Then after that, AJ would the beat a spot on the outside. Then we saw Hernandez with a big tackle on Daniels, then the border toss, and Chavo hit the frog splash, and that was it. Winners and new tag team champion, Sean Hernandez and Chavo Guerrero, Junior Mexican America. Not a bad match, but if they were to remove Chavo and Hernandez, the match would have been a lot better. And obviously, it was a lot better. We're going to be talking about that match very soon in the next review. Where Karangle and AJ face Daniels and Frankie Kazarian as a one-on-one -on -one tag team match. This was not necessarily a boring match or nothing like that. But not very special at all. It was just a about average type of match. 
Next, we got the knockout smash. We got Tara versus Mr. Smarker, Brooke the Smarker, the current knockout champion. A short match. It, obviously, it was better than the last two matches that we saw out of the knockouts on Bound for Glory. But it didn't still have that aura of the first couple of matches that they did during the early, early stages of the, the TNA knockouts history. At the uh, finish of the match, we saw Tara hitting her finisher. And that was it. Winner and new knockout champion, Tara. And then she called in her Hollywood a boyfriend. And it was revealed to be Jesse Gutters, who ended up having a little bit of a run on Impact Wrestling like for four to five years, something along those lines. But during this time, nobody knew who was him. I know, you know, he was wrestling on OBW and stuff like that. He knew how to wrestle, but he was not over with that crown. So the people were chanting, who is that? Who is that? So he kind of killed the big moment that they had in mind. Next, we got the icon, Esteem, and Bully Ray versus the Aces NH. And the Aces NH show up with a kidnap Joseph Park. Holy cow. Only in wrestling, right? You could kidnap a person, then handcuff him into public, and nobody even cares, and nobody calls the cop or anything. Ah, let it happen, right? <laughs> uh, so, match, this was nothing crazy. Obviously, we saw the Aces and Ace. I think it was Dalo and Doc working during this match. They did a couple of spots here and there. We saw a Sting with the Sting Dead Drop. Then the big tag on Bully Ray. Then a guy with a sh long hair, blonde, showed up and attacked Bully Ray. Then after that, you know, Joseph Park gained his supernatural and monstrous power. And he went ahead and cleaned their house on that guy. Then, and this was a very cool spot, we saw Bully Ray uh, and Sting doing the Doomsday device on one of the guys of the Aces and Eights. Very cool spot, you know, obviously paying homage to the Road Warriors. Then we saw one of the Aces and Eights doing some sort of choke slam on Bully Ray on a table. And he pinned Bully Ray and Aces and Eights won the match. Then after the match, they ended up attacking Sting. And none other than the almighty, the immortal Hulk Hogan, showed up to clean the house. Was mad as hell. And they ended up isolating one of the guys. And they went in and they took the mask out. And it was revealed to be Devon. And obviously Bully Ray was not happy about that. And that was that segment. Thoughts on the match? Average type of match. Nothing crazy. As for the Aces and A's, this was a mess. I know they wanted so hard to get this whole thing over, but they took too long to unmask the people. And unless you're someone very, very, pero, pero very talented, you're not going to get over with a mask. They have an expiration day, especially when it comes down to a group. If it is only one person, people will put up with that. But a group of faceless and nameless individuals will not going to get over. They're, you're going to be background noise sooner rather than later. So they took too long to reveal. And then the reveal, it was shocking. I was obviously watching that show live but it, this was awkward and even the people out there in Arizona were chanting that they, this was awkward because they were not expecting you know Devon to be the first one to be revealed but that was what the genius of you know Eric Bishop had in mind next we got for the World Heavyweight Championship we got the Charismatic Enigma Jeff Hardy 
versus the TNA World Heavyweight Champion at that time, Austin Aries, the greatest man that ever left. There, there was a lot of chain wrestling at the very early stages of the match. Then we saw Austin Aries with the suicide dive on the outside. Then the like chancery, but on, it was not that effective. Then another cool, cool spot. We saw a net breaker, an assisted net breaker by Austin Aries on <laughs> Jeff Hardy. Then we saw Jeff Hardy hitting the twist of fate on... Um, Austin Aries, but only for a two. Then another cool spot when you saw Jeff Hardy and Austin Aries both on the third rope. And Austin Aries hit a big Urakarana from the top. Then he went in for the kick with the, his ultra drop kick. And he went and hit it. He went for the second part of that kill being the brain buster. And he was able to hit that, but only for a two count. Then he went ahead and mounted Jeff Hardy into the three of Wold in order to hit a big double foot stomp on Jeff Hardy. He tried that, but he missed. Then Jeff Hardy took advantage of that little mistake. He hit first a regular stoner, and then on top of that, he hit the twist of fate. And then they did a, another cool spot, like Jeff Hardy was landing the Swanton Bomb, but obviously Austin Aries was halfway through, obviously being standing up. Therefore, the visuals of that were like, whoa, it is Austin Aries going to actually stand out or not? So they, they did that little cool spot. Then, obviously, Jeff Hardy landing on Austin Aries. And he pinned him. And he became the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Let me give my, my, my thoughts on this. As a match, this was a very good match. A three and something, almost a four-star type of match. Obviously, they were going to put Jeff Hardy over. Because, obviously, they were doing the whole redemption storyline still with Jeff Hardy. And obviously at that time, Jeff Hardy and his contract was running out and they needed Jeff Hardy to still be on TNA in order to obviously have the most profitable wrestler on that roster during that time to still be on the roster, obviously. So I get why the decision. Final thoughts on this Bound for Glory. Oh, this was a lot better la than last year. Uh, I say the 2011 one. Not the best one, but a very solid one. A 7.5, something along those lines. And if you are a bore and you want to see this pay-per-view, I will highly recommend for you to watch it. Just to skip basically the Joey Ryan and maybe the knockout title match. And everything else would be, be... And even those those, those matches, you could see that without being bored to death. But those were the matches that were shorter and didn't have that much of this significance outside of Tara winning the belt and Jesse Gutters being introduced to the TNA wrestling world. So that's it for me. Thank you a lot. And make sure to check out the next... TNA Bomb for Glory review. That's going to be the one from TNA Bomb for Glory 2013. So goodbye and thanks for watching.